um, I'm a poet, and uh, then other I do other things that surround uh, poetry and then stem from poetry. Um, I am a poet who has always lived between languages because I was born in Poland and grew up there, but I went to a French school and I studied English literature, so I've always existed in between, in the space between languages. Um, and I write uh, a lot for the voice. I write for, I write for, for performance, where the, the, the poems that are meant to be heard uh, rather than read of a page, although I, I, I write those too. And because I spend uh, a lot of time talking to people, uh, some of the traditions I've drawn from were, um, um, you know, um, oral storytelling traditions. Uh, you know, this is where you go to learn how to hold uh, attention to w what forms work, um, even if uh, the poems themselves can sometimes be stories and sometimes kind of, you know, don't rely on narrative uh, to work. I do consider myself as a storyteller. Uh, uh, as a poet, although I think poetry complicates this idea uh, and sometimes it is close to the definition of storytelling that we might all carry uh, in that uh, yeah, the poem uh, tells a narrative. Uh, it may be uh, unreliable or it might be surprising or might not follow the standard pattern, uh, but it's still a story. But even poems that, uh, like I said, don't rely on narratives follow an arc that is not dissimilar uh, from what you might expect from a story. Uh, so in that, and especially uh, in performance, you have a group of humans in a room and you're try trying to take them through an experience. Uh, you try to build up uh, a reaction, you try to establish a connection uh, in ways that are very similar to when you tell stories, even if what you're offering them is, I don't know, a sequence of images or, 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 or something that uh, doesn't resolve itself as neatly as a story usually might, uh, you still try to take them through a similar experience. So I would, I would say, yeah, I, I, I tell stories. One example uh, I, I could give you of a tool that, that's used in poetry a lot, uh, that can be used for discovery, uh, is uh, the use of metaphor, for example which is uh, common in, in any story, in language, right? Uh, language is made out of metaphors. Uh, but what we often expect when we talk about metaphor in writing is that the writer comes up with a clever image that tells us something new, uh, that makes a particular moment memorable. Or, or but what it does, so, so, so staying with it for a second, what it does in the mind of, of the reader, of the viewer, is it um, invites them or almost forces them to be active within the text, right? So it invites them to, to find out what the possible connections are between the, 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 the object and the thing, the object of the comparison. Um, and that's exciting because different people will come up with different explanations. If it's a good metaphor, it opens up a space where, where they can be active and create meaning or create um, beauty or create something. So this is the common use of it. But uh, if you reverse it, um, uh, so if you say are uh, working on a screenplay and you haven't started writing it yet, you, 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 you're figuring out who your characters are, you're figuring out the world uh, in which they move. Um, if I, if I, f I can trick your brain into providing answers if I give you a forced metaphor. So you know a little bit about your character and I can take a random object, uh, I don't know, a bicycle, and I will say your protagonist is like a bicycle. Your brain, because of how they work, uh, how our brains make sense of the world, will immediately try to find uh, points of connection. Okay, it's what, it's, 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 well, my character transports me somewhere, but I have to make an effort to get there. Uh, uh, it's not as fast as a car. You, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll look for ways and, and inevitably they will show you something about your world. So these are, this is a small, very specific example, but I think that some of the poetic practices can be, can be useful um, in, the, in exploration. Uh, because often I, I think it's easier to write poetry in an exploratory manner. Uh, uh, I, I, I often write to find out what it is that I want to write, um, and, and that freedom can, can also be a useful, uh, a useful tool. I think uh, poetic writing or poetic thinking um, 
can be fantastic starting points for, for screenwriters, for, for story development, for a number of reasons. Um, one, because taking someone out of um, their creative habits is invaluable. Um, and uh, taking specifically with, with a screenwriter, taking someone uh, away from how they are used to using words, um, and 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 ke so keeping them in this world that is their professional uh, realm uh, that they are uh, ostensibly used to and comfortable in, but but subverting it, making it strange, assigning different values to the words, um, you know, sequencing them in a way that has nothing to do with story structure and so on, uh, can be f can be freeing. Uh, because it lets them see, uh, you know, the, the, the very uh, building blocks of, of their stories in a, in, a, in a different way. Poetry uh, is very comfortable with uh, inviting others to make meaning within it. It's, it's, it's very comfortable with multiplicity. Um, and, and you could argue that, that poems that are overly prescriptive, clear, declarative are less exciting because they get close to other modes of speech. Um, in a form that doesn't support them, and so if you if you ask people to think poetically early in a creative process, you you uh, hopefully give them a tool where they can keep their options open for longer, where they can withhold solutions, resolutions, where can then where, where where they can where they can move through an idea, where they can uh, explore it, where they can um, uh, articulate it without closing down uh, options without getting into that tunnel that is very hard to leave. I often use images as, uh, as in f photographs as uh, starting points uh, for this uh, because that can also help you discover beyond the plot and beyond character, beyond dialogue, before the functions we usually assign to words, it can help you think about the visual side of the world, how, showing how a thing appearing can mean different things and so on. Um, and uh, and even though this writing will likely never make it in the way it's written into any finished form of a screenplay, uh, over and over I've had feedback that said that it opened up an understanding of, of what the story wants to be, of, of what the character might be, uh, of, or, or, or things that are harder to name and articulate uh, in, the process, in the process of writing. Um, and I think it's that multiplicity. It's the it's that uh, it's that uh, idea that I will build, I will I will find out myself what it is that I'm making as I make it in the moment, and I will trust uh, others. I will trust my audience. I will trust my uh, readers, if you're a poet, to to take these elements and find something in there that I I will encourage certain directions, but keep the others open. That is that is exciting and that can offer something to 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 screenwriters, to people who who, who write in other modes. Poetry can be used to dig into into different, um, yeah, less conscious decision-making processes. But that is, I would say, easier to do uh, using tools that come from from spoken word and performance, and 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 that kind of overlap a bit with the word of of improvisation, uh, which has been part of poetry as well for for centuries. There are different traditions of improvised poetry. Um, uh, that are that are fascinating and uh, and this is yes a set of a set of almost games. I think the idea of play and keeping play in there is important too. Um, that help uh, again that help people not uh, lock themselves into a set of decisions and keep options open. Uh, and if you do that without writing, if you do this in speech, and if you pu uh, especially use time constraints, if you ask for immediate responses, immediate ideas, immediate creation in the moment. Uh, it can be uh, not just spontaneous and fun, uh, and, and I do say fun as an important word. I think that that's often undervalued in the creative process, the enjoyment uh, of it. Asking people to play, to respond quickly, to follow um, aspects of language uh, other than meaning, to follow aspects of language like sound, like rhythm, um, uh, and to see where they lead them uh, is, is can, can open things up. An example of, uh, of play uh, that I sometimes use with, with working with groups 
is by reversing uh, the the standard rule of improvisation, which is if you if you if you do Im improv in the drama context, you, you've probably heard the idea of yes and that the way you build a scene is you don't question what the others are building. So if somebody brings something, you, you have to react with like, yes, and then uh, so we, we're, they say we're in a hospital, and you say yes, and I'm the doctor, and they say yes, and, and so on. So uh, this game flips this, uh, and it's nice to bring in at the moment where a story is beginning to crystallize. Uh, so, so uh, somewhere you ask one person to tell the story the way it exists yet, with, but they likely still have a lot of questions. But you ask them to well, say for now what you have, and then others get to reject uh, elements of the story to push back against them. Um, uh, so you go like no, but <laughs> rather than yes, and uh, and you have to very quickly redirect your story. Uh, in directions you hadn't considered, suddenly changing the location or changing a key decision point or, 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 change or what might become a plot point as it evolves. Um, and the key here is it's clear that it's a game. It's clear that you're not making any final choices. Uh, uh, you're playing around with, with, the, with the what you have so far. And this um, uh, makes it easier for people to become less precious about what they've made, to let go, to look at it from a different direction, to, to, to and, and this in turn reinforces the fact that everything can still be changed, that everything is mutable. Sometimes it just ends up being a, 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 you know, a, an odd, bizarre world version of the story and it exists there and you don't take anything from this. Sometimes it opens up an option that they hadn't even considered because they thought something was axiomatic within the story and it could not be questioned, could not be changed. Um, and in fact, it turns out that the change unlocked, uh, unlocked an element, unlocked a pathway that wasn't there. W one of the things I, I, I like working on is, is shifting, uh, when I work with screenwriters, is shifting them from thinking about a film to just thinking about the story. I find very early on, if you ask them what they're working on, they describe a film rather than tell a story. And uh, that's an exercise and that, that I, I, I have to often be quite ruthless. Uh, but when you listen to the, to the language ticks, to, the, to, the, to, to how they open up uh, there's the, uh, and how they, how they present a story, even at early stages, um, they're not telling the story itself, they're not in the story, they're describing a film, meaning like we o you might say, I don't know, we open in a forest. Uh, we follow, uh, I don't know, a character as they walk through the forest. Uh, so, so already I'm not in it. I'm imagining a film. I'm not imagining the character. Uh, I'm, I'm a few steps removed and so are they. And beca because th thinking like this about the story forces them uh, to, to think uh, using patterns, using codes that are the codes of filmmaking rather than the, for now just elaborating a story. So, so I use a set of games and, and approaches to, to, um, to drag them back to how you might, to, to, um, to a human way of storytelling, to how you might tell a story to, to, to friends in a bar or, or to a group of people who are here to listen to a story. Uh, uh, and that um, does a few things. One, again, it, 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 it moves the brain in a different direction and, and so it, it, it makes them engage with the story in a different way. It makes them feel um, their story, which is, sounds uh, uh, maybe uh, a little abstract, but, 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 the, but any storyteller who has performed to an audience will tell you that it's not abstract in the slightest. You, you, you feel both the story and yourself. And if you do, you, f you get something back from, from the people listening to you. And that's feedback. Um, that's a very concrete form of feedback um, uh, that helps you shape and, um, uh, and evolve uh, your story. It can be quite hard sometimes and quite irritating to the person speaking. Uh, but irritation is not necessarily a bad thing either. It can, it can lead you to f then make a quick choice that's actually exciting. Activities like this have to do with, with, with leaving um, analysis in favor of experience and leaving analytical thinking in favor of a more experiential uh, way to develop uh, a story or a text. Um, and I think, uh, I think that's crucial. We can absolutely kill our own process with, with um, being overly analytical, uh, which I don't think is particularly new, but it's worth repeating. Um, 
And the trouble is that it's very hard to, uh, to, to force ourselves out of this um, uh, analytical mindset, especially if you're experienced, especially if we've had positive reinforcement for, for ways uh, with, uh, in which we find stories. Um, and so it helps to have um, an external uh, stimulus uh, to, 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 to leave that. But another problem is that we treat ourselves too seriously. Uh, as authors, as writers, as professionals, uh, I, and it's understandable. It's people's livelihood, or it's people's, you know, it's people's main activity in life, so they treat it seriously. But this, uh, this, this seriousness shuts down avenues of play, and then sh which shuts down uh, avenues of discovery. And so, getting uh, switching to a different mode of creativity. Um, uh, opens them back up because it takes away some responsibility. You know, if, if, if I ask you to write poetically and you're not a poet, um, you, you, you go like, well, of course, this is going to be bad because this is not my, my uh, craft. This is not what I've worked on. And, 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 and often what this means, it becomes incredible and becomes extremely valuable because of that freedom of suddenly letting go of the... the uh, well, I've been talking about analysis, but also of the, of the quote-unquote professionalism and everything it brings in terms of uh, uh, limits, forms, uh, you know, rigid um, rule sets and structures that, uh, that, that, that uh, maybe come in later, but in the early stages are, are, are absolutely, um, can be harmful to, to ideas and to creativity. What I make is inviting enough for others to want to play with it, uh, and for others to f to bring in their own understanding of language, their own histories, their own identities, their own backgrounds, and to find a space that maybe I could not predict, but that is uh, meaningful to them in some way, that elicits a reaction of some kind. So another way of thinking about this is connection. Uh, I think it's it's building a bridge. It's 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 it is connecting. Um, and uh, and that's, I think, what I'm working on. I think I'm very wary of trying to position myself as uh, either someone with uh, a lesson or, or you know, a, a moral standpoint or, or even a, a clear and singular story to tell because I don't think I've earned this place. I think there are uh, other sources where people can find this, but what I can do is, is I can I can take from me, from my languages, from my voices, um, uh, elements that I can shape into something interesting, beautiful, intriguing, confusing uh, uh, that people will want to engage with. It's an almost physical uh, thing. Uh, the sense when 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 you feel that a, a certain set of words arranged in a certain way um, is doing something and, and, and I know something is a vague term and I can probably wrap it in literary terminology and make it sound uh, more weighty but, 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 but in all honesty uh, sometimes it's, it's, it's hard to express what it is and I find over and over again um, that poems touch uh, people in, in extremely uh, uh, deep and often emotional ways and it's nothing to do with the poem itself. I'm not saying I'm ri I write poems that make people cry. No, it's, it's, it's what they see of themselves uh, reflected through these words and complicated and made beautiful or, or, or what they see of themselves through someone else's eyes. And having that connection happen between, between two humans is, 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 I think, one of the very basic core um, foundational blocks of, of why we tell stories in the first place, whether they manifest in poetry or in novels or in screenplays or theatre or whatever you care, you, you, you care to name. Um, but I couldn't name it and I don't want to name it, uh, especially since it, it, it is a slightly different beast every single time. Um, but it's there. I think the thing I have to say is to, to not be afraid to look for the things that are specifically yours, that are unique to you, that, that don't, that maybe build on texts that came before, forms that came before, sounds, rhythms, shapes that came before, but, but that nobody else could write. That, that, is, that, is, the, that is where you will connect um, and, and your voice, your language, the way they express your 
way of um, what you consider interesting, beautiful, touching, important, urgent. Um, that is the, 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 the value, that is what we look for, even if we don't know that that is what we look for. And so any way you can make yourself let go of, of, of anything that's there by default, of, uh, of you know, factory settings for your writing, is invaluable, uh, even if it feels strange and uncomfortable and childish and overly playful, and it's worth uh, pursuing.